Aloha, and welcome to today's Kupuna. I'm Percy Ihara, your host. Many people believe that arthritis is just another name for aches and pains that people develop as they age. While it is true that arthritis becomes much more common as people age, arthritis may begin at any age, including childhood. Conversely, certain elderly people never do develop arthritis. On today's show, we'll be addressing this important topic of arthritis with the Arthritis Foundation of Hawaii. And with me today is one of the Board of Directors, Mr. Graham Pierce. Welcome to the show, Graham. Thanks, Percy. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Now, before we start each show, we begin with a public service message for our kupuna. So go ahead and grab our paper and pencil, as you may want to take down some notes, or at least write down a few phone numbers. We'll be right back after this message for our kupuna. Aloha. My name is Sarah Robinson with Funeral Consumers Alliance Hawaii. We've been helping families plan their final arrangements since 1963. We are a nonprofit educational organization with no products to sell, only information to give away. We hope our planning materials will help you with your efforts to plan ahead. Planning ahead can easily save you thousands of dollars. One of two things happens when you die. If funeral arrangements were made in advance of death, the dignified celebration of your life as you would have wanted will be easier to arrange and pay for by your survivors. Whether services are simple or elaborate, planning ahead is a free gift you can give to your family. If plans weren't made in advance, decisions will have to be made under pressure and at a time of grief. This usually results in unnecessary expenses and a sense of chaos as survivors search for important phone numbers and documents. Disagreements are likely to occur as your family struggles to decide what you would have wanted. Our Statement of Desires planning form is a simple one-page form that lets your family know what you may or may not want for your final arrangements. This form also has a section for recording vital information required by the Department of Health to process a death certificate. We also offer a free mortuary price survey which makes comparing prices easier. Please call for additional materials at Funeral Consumers Alliance Hawaii. We also have speakers available for informational talks and workshops. Again, we have no products to sell, only information to give away. Please contact us at Funeral Consumers Alliance Hawaii. Our phone number is 6385580. That's 6385580. Our message machine is on 24 hours a day. I'm Sarah Robinson for Funeral Consumers Alliance Hawaii. Aloha and plan ahead. My guest today is the Arthritis Foundation of Hawaii and one of their board members, Graham Pierce. Welcome to the show again, Graham. Thank you. Now, Graham, give us our, our audience a little bit of idea of how you got involved with the Arthritis Foundation because you are one of the board members, right? Yes, I've served on the board now for four years. Uh, I met originally the executive director at the time uh, in another organization that we were both involved with. Mm -hmm. At that time, I really didn't know anything about arthritis. I'm, I'm fortunate, Percy, in the sense that I haven't had arthritis and haven't been afflicted by the disease personally or my family. Uh -huh. Good. But she started talking to me about it, and I became very interested in, uh, in, in the topic because it seemed like it affected so many people, and I had no idea that it was as broad and as widespread as it is. So it seemed to me an opportunity to be involved in the community, which I was looking yeah. for at the time. I've been here about seven years now, and, uh, Good for you. and it's been a very rewarding experience serving on the board and uh, the, found at the uh, Arthritis Foundation. Good. Like, like, it's like you, I didn't know much about it. My, my, mother, has, my mother has mild forms of arthritis, but um, in really in talking to you and learning more about the Arthritis Foundation, statistically, it's, it's the largest chronic disease in the United States, let alone in Hawaii, right? It is, and most people don't realize that. Um, it is the largest chronic disease, most widespread chronic disease in the Hawaiian Islands uh, of the community here. And that's why it's very important work that the Arthritis Foundation does. Um, the arthritis itself, the disease, affects, uh, can affect both joints. Uh, you often, you might see some elderly people, particularly with uh, knuckle pain and, right. or knee pain. Hip pain is common. Um, all of these are forms of arthritis or results of the disease itself. Um, 
or you might, uh, or uh, maybe small children can be affected by it. it. It covers a very widespread range. It can also be tissue related. It doesn't necessarily have to be the joint and the bone. It can be tissue related. So it has oh. many, many forms and takes many uh, uh, types of, it affects many different ways. And that's why it's uh, such a widespread issue. So the Arthritis Foundation in Hawaii uh, started in 1965 with a, with a goal in Hawaii of supporting uh, the people in Hawaii who are affected by the disease. Now, give our audience a little idea of the Arthritis Foundation. It's a nonprofit, and you guys basically do a lot of the promoting awareness, promoting uh, healthy issues, right? What, what, do you folks, what else do you folks do? Well, those are the, that's one of the key areas. I think the Arthritis Foundation is very broad, but I think nationally you'd, we could break it down into two main areas mm -hmm. of what we do in relation to arthritis. One would be support, and that it would be supporting the sufferers or those who have the disease. Uh, the other would be research. So specifically here in Hawaii, uh, on the support side, we, we are there to provide education for mm -hmm. sufferers of, of arthritis, um, information about the disease, what it means to have arthritis, um, what types of forms it can take, how it might affect you, how it might impact your, your abilities to do certain things that you're used to doing. Mm -hmm. um, and, but also, the other area would be uh, ahana of the person suffering from right, the family. Arthritis, the family because sometimes it can be very difficult to know how to help someone who is having pain and, and having difficulty moving around. So that's a big area of support, and, and our office provides information. Uh, the staff there are there to uh, take calls and provide information, literature, um, anything we can do to raise awareness and educate those who suffer from it and those who help those who suffer from it. Um, the other area of support is, uh, is bringing people who suffer from arthritis together. One of the things that I've enjoyed uh, being working on the Arthritis Foundation uh, board is, is our programs for children. And, uh, and I think what that does is highlight for me how important it is for people who suffer from the disease to be able to talk to each other and to um, discuss their situation with one another freely and openly. Um, and, and that way may learn things that maybe we, we wouldn't be able to tell them or think to tell them. They, they can talk to each other about things that are working for them, helping, sure. helping them personally. And that happens when we get people who, um, who are uh, uh, suffering from the disease in, in one place, when they start to talk to each other. Well, that probably helps because now they understand what grandma and grandpa is going through possibly. <laughs> and that too as well, right. yeah. So uh, they can help start to understand the more of the ramifications of what it means to have arthritis. Yeah, it does definitely affect the family. Give our audience arth arthritis problems and, and the affliction. What exactly is it? Is it joints, tissues? Is it something that you can see on an X-ray? When do you get it? Things like that. Um, typically, if there is a typical case, typically it's going to show up in, in uh, late 40s. You might start early 40s. You might start to feel some uh, some slight pain in your joints and sort of write it off to getting old, not realizing. That's not like me. <laughs> <laughs> not realizing what that might mean. Um, and most people, will, if they have arthritis or if it develops, will start to have more difficulty moving certain joints, mm -hmm. uh, late 50s, early 60s, but it can affect any anybody, age. any age. Um, there's about a thousand children in Hawaii who suffer from Hawaii. That's from, amazing. From, Why? Yeah, that's amazing. A thousand children? Um, but, it, but it is, as you mentioned at the top of the show, a disease that tends to become much more prevalent in the elderly right. and totally in, in Hawaii. Uh, there's about 200, in fact, over 200,000 diagnosed cases of arthritis. Oh. We, we expect or believe that if we included those that haven't been diagnosed, it's as many as 300,000 people of our population, Jeez. which is about 30% of, of the people living in Hawaii. Yeah, that's a, that's a big issue. And I'm glad you're here because that's one of the things we want to raise awareness with the show. And that's what today's Kapuna does and provide a resource, the Arthritis Foundation. Now, how many different forms are there now? Somebody mentioned a figure of 120 different types of arthritis. You're, you're exactly right. It takes many forms. 120 is the, the number at the moment. Um, the most common, or the, probably not common, but the most uh, widely um, recognized might be rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis. Osteoporosis might be names that people have heard of. But it also takes the form of gout, uh, lupus, uh, bursitis, tendonitis. Even carpal tunnel syndrome are all forms of, of arthritis. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Gout? 
I thought yes, that was only yeah. because you ate, you ate too much <laughs> rich food. Well, it can be diet related. It's yeah. can, it can come about diet, but it can also be genetic. Okay. Um, yeah, that, since you mentioned genetics, is it hereditary? Well, the research is uh, pointing to that direction in some cases. But it can also be environmental. And, and by the way, I should mention, I, I like your shirt. It's, uh, it's <laughs> timely for this week. <laughs> but I mention that because sports can be something that, uh, uh -huh. for example, if you played sports, uh, were active uh, as in your youth and played uh -huh. sports, that could put pressure on joints which may mm. turn into or uh, become arthritis at a later, uh, later in life. So it can be environmental. Does, uh, diet can affect, uh, can affect the, your, um, your contracting uh, the disease as well. Sure, well, I played sports growing up, and I think I have a few joints, and I will see my doctor in a few months. But what, so I really, when I get up in the morning, I feel a little aching pain. That could be a form of arthritis? It could be. It oh. could be. And uh, it's worth at least asking the question. When you feel, start to feel some aches and pains, or if mm -hmm. you start to feel some aches and pains, it, it's become, um, uh, we've become aware of the fact that the earlier that it's diagnosed as arthritis, mm -hmm. if that's in fact what it is, um, the more likelihood there is that some of the current medications and the medications are improving mm -hmm. uh, rapidly as, uh, as more and more research is done in this area. But the sooner that you catch or diagnose the disease, the greater chance there will be of, there's no cure, but there's greater the chance that we can reduce the uh, rapid onset or the, the, it getting worse uh, sure. quickly. And one tip would be pretty much just to stay healthy. Try to, try to exercise on a regular basis and diet, and I know the doctor always tells you that when you go to visit, but in the case of arthritis, those two things are very important. Yeah, great. Coming up next, we'll talk further with the Arthritis Foundation's Board Director, Graham Pierce. Uh, now, let's take a short break for an important message for our Kapuna. Hi, I'm Gene Kaneshiro from the Department of Education, Safety and Security Section. Want to stay active and young? Want to help our school students cross the street safely? Want to contribute to making our streets safe for your fellow kupunas as they bring their grandchildren to school? The Honolulu Police Department and the Department of Education is looking for kupunas like you to be a crossing guard. What is an adult crossing guard? A crossing guard is a person trained by the Honolulu Police Department to assist our school students cross the street safely before and after school. Adult crossing guards play an important role in the lives of our children who walk or bicycle to and from schools in your neighborhood. School crossing guards help children safely cross the street at key locations. They remind drivers of the presence of pedestrians. They make parents feel comfortable about their children walking or bicycling to school. They help remind children to be responsible for their own safety. They are role models helping children develop their skills necessary to cross streets safely at all times. If you are interested in working at a school near you, contact the school you are interested in or contact me at 586-3457. That's 586-3457. I'm Gene Kanishiro of the Department of Education, Safety and Security Section, and I'm asking for your support. Aloha. Welcome back. Arthritis is one of the most prevalent chronic health problems and the nation's leading cause of disability. Now, Graham, let's talk more about the Arthritis Foundation and about what you folks do, but I really had a question in mind. Let's say I go to the doctor and he said, I got some aches and pains, doc. What do you think I should do? What, what would happen from then? The first thing that the doctor is going to do is ask you more about the symptoms, of course. They need okay. to know exactly what it is that, uh, that you're feeling and, and when it occurs. And uh, okay. They'll probably ask you about diet questions and uh, exercise questions and those kind of background issues if they're not aware of those situations. Okay. If, it's, uh, if it's something that they feel needs to be tested for arthritis, um, it can be a blood test. It could be an x-ray, depending mm. on what form it's taking sure. or where the pain is. And if, in fact, it's diagnosed as arthritis ultimately, they would uh, refer you to a rheumatologist who okay. then can pinpoint the issues that need to be uh, and, and create the, the perfect uh, uh, set of uh, okay, regimen for you to, to address the disease. Okay, because I know sometimes 
you know, I guess if you're in the 70s, you may, if you don't have it by then, probably a good chance you may not get it, but you never know, right? It can always come later in life, but typically it's going to show up uh, 40s and 50s. Is, yeah. is for most people, that's when they start to feel the effects. Okay, good, because I know our, some of our audience is a younger set. Maybe they're having their, watching the show with their parents, but I mean, I'm 47, and so I know I feel a few aches and pains, so I'll, I'll tell you this. Check it out if there's anything else. Now, in forms of advocacy and programs, the Arthritis Foundation does a lot, right? Yes, we do. Uh, you mentioned advocacy. It's one area we're very active in, and here in Hawaii especially. Good. Um, trying to raise awareness is one thing. Mm -hmm. Trying to raise awareness with those in the legislature that can make a difference is, uh, is another area that we Good. try to be involved in. We contact uh, those that represent us in Washington and those that represent us locally. Uh, whenever there's an issue on the floor that uh, we feel strongly enough to get involved with or to uh, sure. take a side on. Sure. And I know you have a yearly walk that's always in April. Yes. And that's a walk at Alamoana Park? or at Actually, we hold it at the Hawaiian uh, Adventures Water Park, which oh, is really? a fun place to, to wow. hold it. It's a, it's a flat area, so we make it uh, as accessible to uh, families and to those afflicted by arthritis as possible. Mm -hmm. So it's a fairly short walk uh, for that reason. We don't want to I exclude see. anybody who, uh, who may have trouble or sure. be affected by arthritis and have difficulty um, uh, with maneuverability. Um, but having it at the uh, uh, water park gives us the chance to uh, have the walk there early and, uh, and have participants stay and enjoy the, the water park during the day. Um, at that walk, we raise money. That's the primary purpose uh -huh. uh, of the walk, but we also have booths and information, uh, representatives from various different uh, uh, medical um, organizations uh, mm -hmm. providing outside resource materials. And, uh, and so it's a, it's a fun day. It's designed to be fun. We have music and bands and Good. prizes, and, um, and we'd like to get everyone involved if they are interested. Oh, definitely. I think... Having fun along with giving back to the community is, is one of the things that we do prescribe for, for our senior community, but also for my, people my age that want to give back to the community. That's one of the major reasons why we do the show. But in terms of programs, uh, what kind of different programs do you know? Cause I know you have aquatics and Tai Chi, is that correct? We do. Uh, exercise programs are a big part of yeah. our involvement in addressing the effects of arthritis. Uh, exercise is a major um, uh, a major way of relieving the, some of the soreness, but it has to be exercise appropriate because mm -hmm. to to the, the symptoms because it is possible to uh, to exercise inappropriately. Uh, for example, and in the, in the, you mentioned the aquatics and the YMCA and the YWCA helps us in that area. But you, to exercise in the water uh, and be part of the aquatics program, the water needs to be at least 86 degrees. Now, that's warm for most of us, but for someone suffering from arthritis, that helps uh, the joints loosen up, and sure. so you're not, uh, you're not exacerbating or making the problem worse when you exercise um, by exercising in that warmer water. Um, it actually loosens up the joints and, and helps relieve the pain, but that's an important uh, part of that whole aquatics program, is having the water at a, at a, sure. a, a sufficient temperature to make it a benefit and not a problem. Right. Uh, you mentioned the Tai Chi, which we're very proud of because that's a Hawaii exclusive. Uh, the Arthritis Foundation right. in Hawaii created, uh, with the help of uh, Tai Chi experts, created that program, mm -hmm. and it's been very, very successful um, in alleviating symptoms of arthritis for certain sufferers. And that's something that is only uh, done here in Hawaii. It's a special program. And where do you folks have these programs at? There are, there are several locations around the islands. Um, Probably the best way, if, if your viewers have an interest in learning more about those programs, is to contact our office. We can give you times and locations. Okay. It's a fairly long list, so it'd be too, li too sure, long sure. to list on the show. But, but feel free to contact the office to get a full list yeah. of the schedule of programs. Good. I know you also mentioned that you have speakers that can go out to the community, like, say, a senior club or a church group or a Rotary or Lions Club or any organization, to speak on behalf and, and maybe give some ideas and and gives uh, the seniors some tips about how to, how to avoid or prolong this disease. Yeah? Well, we do, uh, and it could either be someone from, uh, from the staff here locally, uh, which would be more of an informational program, right. more of an awareness program, uh, bringing information about uh, arthritis to the community through those types of uh, organizations. Very, uh, very valuable resource for us to be able to get the message out and mm -hmm. to spread the information that we have available to people. 
It could be in the form of uh, doctors, um, doctors that work with us or medical professionals that work with us. Um, if they're available uh, at the times allotted, uh, maybe willing to make a presentation and able to make a presentation about some of the research and some of the new uh, drugs or the medical procedures available to, mm -hmm. um, to sufferers of arthritis. So it could take a couple of different forms, but again, um, one of those things to contact the office. If you have an organization that's looking for speakers or interested in a presentation about the disease itself in either form, we'd be happy to try to accommodate that. Yes. Good. Yeah, I think it's really important to educate the public. And that's what we try to do. I, I bring a lot of nonprofits on, especially all these issues regarding your health. And I didn't realize osteoporosis was a form of arthritis and even gout. Yeah. I never knew that. No, and I didn't either before joining the Arthritis <laughs> Foundation, to be honest. I, oh. I, I, as you said at the top of the show, that was my understanding, was that oh. arthritis was a disease that afflicted the elderly, and I didn't really have to worry about it until I was in my 70s, but that's simply not true. Right. Now, every, every organization, especially nonprofits, need volunteers. And yes. How is your case with Arthritis Foundation? Yeah, for, like most organizations, uh, volunteers are the, uh, the fuel that runs the engine, if you will. Sure. Um, we can use help in the office, manning the phones, um, sending out mailers, sending out information, responding to uh, requests for different things. Um, so that's certainly one form. If you'd like to be involved in the walk that you mentioned before, sure. uh, we've got that structured so that we have we try to organize uh, teams and get a competitive uh, thing right. going on as far as fundraising. And mm -hmm. uh, so that's another avenue that, uh, that people could be involved with if they have an interest. Um, Many ways to volunteer and help out with the Arthritis Foundation, even simply organizing, signing people in at, uh, at seminars, um, any help that we can get from people, any time they can give us, we can put them to, uh, to work for us and uh, help us do the things we do and be Good. more effective at what we do. Any last tips or stories they can give to us, our audience? Um, I like to share a story of, uh, of uh, the, the children that I've been in, in, involved with. That's, that's really been my, the one thing that, that surprised me more than anything else about, uh, about arthritis is the effect it has on, on children. And I mentioned earlier that bringing people together to, to talk about the disease is, is helpful. In their case, uh, as, as children or grandchildren of your right. viewers, um, they would know that, that the worst thing that, that can happen for a child is to stand out, be different, uh, Absolutely. have something different than everybody else. And certainly arthritis for some children does cause that to be the case. And for them to be able to be just like everybody else in a group of kids at camp for a, for a weekend is, is a great experience. They, they really have a great sure. time. So you know, unfortunately, there are some grandchildren of your, uh, your audience that suffer from arthritis, and, sure. and, um, and, and that's a big part of what we do. Uh, Graham, thank you very much. Uh, we've got to take one more short break. We'll be right back after this message for our Kapuna. Aloha, I'm Martha Sampson, and I've been a volunteer with Project Donna for the past 17 years. Project Donna is an interfaith volunteer caregivers program that provides a variety of services to the frail, elderly, and disabled in Hawaii to ensure their well-being, independence, and dignity in an environment of their choice. Did you know that Hawaii enjoys the highest life expectancy in the United States? The older adult population in the state is growing twice as fast as the national average. As it grows, so does the need for compassionate options to help older adults maintain the independence and dignity they deserve. Project Donna can help by providing services to assist our kupuna with friendly visits, respite services, transportation to medical appointments, grocery shopping or religious services, as well as telephone visits, minor home repairs, light housekeeping, home safety assessments, and family caregiver support. Project Donna is partially funded by the state's Executive Office on Aging and Elderly Affairs Division, count, City and County of Honolulu. Volunteers are welcome from all faiths and are guided by the universal principle of Donna, which is a Sanskrit word that combines selfless giving and compassion without the desire for recognition or reward. In my years as a volunteer, I've been so very blessed by the experiences of both other volunteers and also elderly and disabled who have received Project Donna services. As a volunteer, 
I'm grateful for the opportunity to live my faith every day, not just on Sunday. By providing a few simple services and giving a few hours a week, we can make such a difference in the lives of our kupuna. As one grateful Project Donna recipient put it, life would not be as nice without your help. So if you would like to help, please call Project Donna at 945-3736. That's 945-3736. Your volunteer efforts will help someone live independently and with dignity in their own homes. After all, our kupuna have always taken care of us. Isn't it time we cared for them too? I'd like to thank Grand Pierce for being on our show today. The Arthritis Foundation is the only national nonprofit organization that supports more than 120 different types of arthritis and related conditions with advocacy programs, services, and research. Let's not let arthritis limit our kapuna from walking, dressing, and enjoying a better quality of life. If you have any questions for the Arthritis Foundation of Hawaii, Graham, your phone number now. Uh, the phone number is 596-2900. And once again? 596-2900. Great. Stay tuned each week as today's kapuna will bring to you valuable information, programs, and services in Hawaii to help our seniors live a better quality of life. So please tell your family and friends about today's kupuna. Thank you for joining us today. I am Percy E. Howard, your host. We're here each Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. on Aleto's Channel 52. Aloha and live well. <laughs>